All right, now we're going to talk about acids and bases, and there are two ways that we're going to talk about them. One is the Bronsted-Lowry um, way of talking about it, which you've probably learned in your other classes. Well, first, there's the Arrhenius method, uh, which we don't really talk too much about. And the Arrhenius is basically, if you have an H+, it is considered uh, an acid, right? If, if you have a compound and it ionizes and for, forms H plus ions, it's an acid, or if it forms hydroxide ions, it's an acid, okay? So like if you take HCl and you put it into water, it ionizes into H plus ions and Cl minus ions. And the formation of the H plus ions implies it's an acid, okay? But it's coming from what you throw in there. Another example is if you take sodium hydroxide and you throw it into your beaker or into water, um, you form sodium ions and hydroxide ions. Basically, it's the ionization of the molecules that you're throwing in there. And this is the Arrhenius method. Don't worry about it. it you, you already kind of know it. However, this doesn't explain what happens to ammonia. If you take ammonia and throw it into water, what happens? Well, by looking at the molecule, it looks maybe kind of like an acid. It has H's and it just has a nitrogen. So you think, well, that should be an acid. Well, it's not an acid. All right. It's actually a base. All right. Ammonia is a base. Well, where is the hydroxide coming from? I don't see any hydroxide on this molecule. All right. So Bronsted-Lowry then said, well, we have to come up with another way of defining what an acid base is. Arrhenius was probably 50 to 100 years before Bronsted-Lowry. Arrhenius just kind of wanted something to explain acid and bases, and it does explain maybe 90, 95% of molecules, but what about that last 5%? How do you explain ammonia being a base? So that's what Bronsted-Lowry does, is it actually explains everything about an acid base, not just HCl and sodium hydroxide, but it also includes ammonia as to what a base is, okay? Um, so let me see if the terms acid base have been different meanings in different contexts. So we just talked about Arrhenius has one way, bronsted Lowry is another way. We specify the usage with more complete terminology. A lot of H plus base solution has a hydroxide, which that is a definition. If it has hydroxide, it's a base. If it has H plus, it's a base. Uh, I'm sorry, an acid. Uh, but the question is, is how are these being formed? Is it coming from the molecule or is there something else that's causing hydroxide? Okay. Um, so basically how you define Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases is, um, uh, a Bronsted acid. So for short, they call it Bronsted rather than Bronsted-Lowry. Um, I also might call it a BL. So for short, Bronsted-Lowry, but a Bronsted acid is a substance that donates a hydrogen cation, All right. Kind of what Bronsted and Lowry did is they are looking at this as a chemical reaction with water chemical reaction with water, okay? Because you have to have water to have an acid or a base. You cannot have an acid or base if you do not have water. Like if you take um, HCl in the gas form, it is not an acid. It's not hydrochloric acid, it's hydrogen chloride. But when you take it and you put it in water, dissolve it in water, that's when it becomes an acid because it starts ionizing into hydronium ions. If you remember, hydronium ions are H3O plus ions. All right, it's basically an H plus, let's see where I have room here, an H plus is popping onto a water molecule. Okay, so this H is going on here to give me H3O plus, and now it's giving me a plus charge. You can kind of see that as that molecule right there. All right, let me lower this down so you can see the words. Okay, so anything that um, um, it donates, it, it gets rid of. So if something is getting rid of a hydrogen, it is an acid. A base is something that accepts a proton. Okay, so something is accepting a proton. All right, so proton is a synonym for H+, loss of an electron, and H leaving the bare nucleus as a proton. All right, so in this case, this is my acid, HCl is my acid, and water is the base. How do I know that? Well, I have to look at the products, okay? So let's compare this acid, or let's compare HCl to what happened on the other side of the equation. What happened? Did the chlorine accept a proton, or did it get rid of the proton, or donate the proton? Well, it's pretty obvious. Chlorine got rid of it, or it donated the proton. Therefore, this is acting as an acid, 
because it's donating the hydrogen. Okay, so then what's the water acting as? Well, the water is starting as H2O and it's becoming H3O plus. It's accepting the hydrogen. Okay, so th that hydrogen is going on to the water. So therefore, the water is acting as a proton acceptor. It's accepting the proton to give me H3O, so this is acting as a base. So bronze to acid base rea reactions, you always have an acid and you always have a base in the reaction. It's not like you just have an acid or you just have a base. You always have both. Okay, so the chlorine got rid of the hydrogen. So it's kind of like these lone pairs on the water are taking that hydrogen. All right, and the electrons are going on the chlorine. All right, so it's kind of, that's how it's working. It's not that the hydrogen is just floating freely. These electrons are grabbing the hydrogen to form H3O+. Okay, now there are names of these compounds. There's always a name for something, and we call it a conjugate either acid or base. All right, and the way you know is whatever it was on this side of the equation, it's the exact opposite on the other side. So if the chlorine was part of the acid on this side, the chlorine now is the conjugate base on this side. All right. If the water was part of the base on this side, the water now is part of the acid, conjugate acid on this side. So it's always the opposite. Another way of looking at it is look at the reaction in the reverse direction. All right, and what's happening? Well, the water is going from H3O to H2O, so it's losing a proton, it's donating a proton, so it's acting as an acid. So if you look at it in the reverse way, you can figure that out too. But I think it's just as easy as if you just um, uh, you just look uh, as it as the opposite. All right. Um, I want to actually do something here. Hold on, I'm gonna put you on. Hi, I'm back. Which you didn't know because it was a split second in your life in your uh, time zone. But I basically changed these margins, and I realized I was able to fit the whole uh, thing. And you think I would have figured that out much earlier? But there we go. We're good to go. Okay. There we go, bronze acid acid base, the definitions. Okay, so uh, what else do we need to know about it? Something called pKa's, okay? pKa is a constant. Every um, acid has a pKa, all right? And it's basically a number that kind of tells you roughly how acidic a compound is. Now, for those of you that took Chem 112, you've done extensive calculations on Ka's and pKa's and KBs and PKBs and all that fun stuff. We are doing none of those calculations, okay? Um, I just kind of want you to understand what a, what a PKA is and what it's telling you, okay? So it's telling you the extent at which um, a compound ionizes. Um, you've learned in the past the difference between a strong acid and a weak acid. It's basically the extent of the ionization of the H plus ion on the molecule. And that's kind of what the, what, um, our, our, um, our pKa's are telling you, okay? The lower the number, okay? So if pKa, pKa, all right, is lower, that means it is more acidic. So small numbers imply very acidic. The higher the pKa, okay, obviously the less acidic, Okay, uh, and what would another way of describing less acidic? More basic, stronger base, okay? So these values can range, pKa's can range from negative 10 to about 50, all right? This chart just gives you a few of them. Let me see if there's a chart on the next page. No, but I'll, I'll kind of give you a few. All right, strong acids, hydrochloric acid, nitric acid, sulfuric acid. Strong acids are negatives. You can kind of see a few down here. These are negative pKa's, okay? Very strong. Remember, the lower the number, the stronger the acid, the weaker the base. So I kind of like this because you kind of have both here. Stronger acid implies weaker base. A weaker acid implies a stronger base, okay? Lower numbers, all right? A phosphoric acid is considered a weak acid, so is acetic acid. Okay, phosphoric acid is actually acid that's found in 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 uh, like Coca-Cola, um, like in soda. Okay, acetic acid. You guys know what acetic acid is? That is vinegar. Okay, just to kind of give you an idea, something that like these are still small numbers considering it can go up to 50, but they're acidic, but they're not so acidic that you know it, it it'll kill a person. Um, but you know it's 
it's, it's pretty acidic. So I like this graph because it's kind of giving you an idea of where things are. Um, we don't really, I'm not going to worry about these two right now. Water is about 16, all right? Ethanol, alcohol, ethanol is drinking alcohol, roughly about the same pKa or acidity as water, okay? You would not really consider ethanol acidic, okay? Um, so 16, you know, around this range is probably about where you have um, equal amounts uh, of, uh, of your H plus and, and your base. It's pretty much a neutral area. Now, as you start going above this, you're getting much less, less than acidic, all right? The highest pK, like around 50, is a hydrogen carbon bond, okay? Remember we talked about this is very nonpolar, okay? Uh, acidity is based on how easily a hydrogen can fall off. The more polar covalent your bond is, the easier the hydrogen can fall off. So that's why HCl is so incredibly acidic, because chlorine is so much more electronegative than hydrogen is. So the hydrogen can easily pop off. It's very partial positive, all right? But remember I told you hydrogen and carbon are roughly the same. So it, basically this is very nonpolar. It is so not acidic, all right? And this has a pKa of roughly around 45 to 50, okay? So, and we're talking hydrocarbons like wax, okay? Like if you think of a candle, do you think that's acidic at all? Not really, okay? Um, or plastics, anything plastic it really is not really acidic. Okay, um, there's a whole bunch of stuff obviously in between 16 and 50. We're not really going to talk about it yet, but you, you, you'll kind of learn them on the way. So moral of the story is just kind of understand pKa's, understand that it's telling you how acidic something is. The lower the acidity, I'm sorry, the lower the pKa, the more acidic. The higher the pKa, the less acidic or the stronger the base. Okay, so you can actually take this knowledge and predict if a reaction will occur. Let me lower this a little so we can include the numbers down here. Okay, so predicting acid-base reactions from the pKa values. Okay, um, pKa values are related as a logarithm. Of, we're not going to worry about that. Um, it's useful in predicting whether a acid-base reaction will even take place. Okay, the stronger base always takes hold of a proton more tightly. So what does this mean? Reactions always go from the stronger acid, okay, the stronger acid to the weaker acid. That's how reactions take place. So if you wanted to know, if you took acetic acid, all right, and you put it in with sodium hydroxide, I don't have the sodium there, it's the counter ion, we don't care about it, will the reaction occur? Okay, to give you the acetate ion. So basically what, what's happening is this hydroxide is plucking off that hydrogen right there. All right, and then these electrons are going on the oxygen. All right, so basically the hydrogen is coming over here, but this is how the chemistry works. Electrons always grab it. So will this occur? You have to determine if this reaction is going from the stronger acid to the weaker acid. So how do you know that? Well, you look at the pKa's. Remember I told you the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So I'm comparing this 4.76 number to 15.74, okay? 14.76 is much smaller, therefore this is the stronger acid. Remember, the smaller the number, the stronger the acid. Four is smaller than 15, therefore this is the stronger acid. So if this is the stronger acid, we are going from the stronger acid to the weaker acid. All right, these are not acids. Hydroxide and acid ion are not acids. They are your bases, right? Because this is accepting the proton. It's going from hydroxide to H2O. This is the proton acceptor, so it's the base, all right? If the acetate was the acid on this side, I'm, yeah, if the acetate was part of the acid on this side, it's gonna be the, the base on this side. It's the opposite, okay? So this reaction will occur. If I take acetic acid and throw it in with this, to sodium hydroxide, the reaction will occur because I'm going from a, a smaller pKa, which means what? Stronger acid, smaller pKa, stronger acid, larger pKa, weaker acid, okay? Um, before I get into uh, section 11, the other thing I want to talk about is the base, okay? This is a strong acid, so if this is the strong acid, how is this as a base? I already told you, it's a weak, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, this is the strong acid, this is the weak acid, Okay, if this is a strong acid, the acetate is going to be what as the base, a weak base or a strong base? If I have a strong acid, what? how is it as a base? It's a weak base. Okay, 
Now, if you think about it, it's very obvious. If something is a strong acid, it means it wants to get rid of the proton. So in, in our basic form, if this wants to get rid of the proton so bad, it does not want it back. It's like basically saying, I am very happy. I do not want that proton back. You can keep it. Therefore, it's a weak base because it does not want to accept that proton anymore. Okay, so everything is always the opposite. If this is a strong acid, the conjugate form of it is going to be the weak. All right, if this is the weak acid, if water is the weak acid on this side, how is this as a base? It should be strong. It's always the opposite, right? If it's a weak acid, it means it does not want to get rid of its proton. It wants to keep it. Therefore, if it wants to keep it, if it doesn't have it, it wants it really, really bad. So it's going to be a strong base. All right, and what you'll notice is your strongs are always on one side and your weaks will always be on the other side. Never will you have a case where you have a strong acid and a weak base on the same side or a strong base and a weak acid. Both strongs will always be on one side and both weaks will always be on the other side. Okay, if this reaction was flipped, if you had the weak on one side and the strong on the product side, the reaction would not occur. All right, they do not have an example in the slides, but we will see examples um, in class, all right, um, and uh, all right, we, we can keep going. I don't think I think there's only two slides for this one. So organic acids and bases, all right. Organic acids characterized by the presence of a positively polarized hydrogen atom, all right. So your hydrogens have to be polarized. That means they are attached to electronegative atoms. This is partially negative. This is partially negative. Um, these are not really that partial negative. Why? Because remember, carbon hydrogen are very equal in electronegativity. So that's why the, the pKs are so much higher, okay? Acetic acid is much lower. There's something going on. So if you notice that these are both attached to oxygens, but this group right here, this C double bond O, has a huge effect on the acidity of this hydrogen. We'll learn about it, I believe, in chapter four or five, but it's something called resonance. If you've learned about re resonance, you know what it is. That's the reasoning. If you don't, don't worry about it. We'll learn it. Um, so that's why this is so much more acidic, okay? Pretty much, or you can think of it, it has more oxygens, it's more electronegative. It's drawing electrons more away from the hydrogen. Where here you have equal electronegativities, okay? So um, those that lose a proton from OH, such as methanol and acetic acid, and then, there, and then there are some where it can come off of a carbon hydrogen as long as there is a C double bond O next to it. This is just basically showing you the three types of acids that you can get in organic molecules. All right, this is called a carboxylic acid group. We'll learn more about it in chapter two. This is an alcohol group, and this is a ketone. And like I said, we'll learn more about it in chapter two. They're just trying to show you different types of molecules and how the acidity is um, affected by it. All right. Um, I guess there is more. Having a lump here. Nitrogen containing derived from ammonia are the most. Okay, so th they're just giving you more information here. Um, hydrogens attached to the nitrogens actually act as bases. These are, are are some bases. We just saw some acids. These are bases. Nitrogen. Anything with a nitrogen pretty much acts as a base. All right. Notice, look, this is a, a alcohol, just like how we saw over here. Methanol. How can methanol act as an acid and a base? How is that possible? Well, it's very possible, and we will talk about that. Same for acetone. Acetone is acting both as an acid and a base. You can see in the previous slide, acetone is acting as an acid here, but it's also acting as a base. And we will talk more about that when we start talking about Lewis acids and bases in the next video.